Okay, I seriously hope no one tried to use this with the class because that would have caused an infinite loop and would have crashed your game. Okay, anyway, moving on. Now it's time for instance variables. So, at, s at the first lesson, I learned this was an instance variable and this was a local. And for this entire series, until up until now, we've been using local. Now it's finally time to get into the instance variables. Okay, so we can make an instance variable over here in our um, method one. And we can call it, I'm just going to call it instance. That instance, and it's going to equal 10. Alright, now we can do def method 2. Okay, and now we can go message box underscore p at instance. And then we can go down here and we can also print out local. Okay, so now we can do local equals, how about 9, make it 9. Local equals 9 and instance equals 10. Now my class not new and all that stuff, we can go method 1, method 2. And yeah, okay, play it. Ten. Error. And why? Well, this is why. Because like I said at the you know very much earlier tutorial, local methods are only around until they hit end. Okay? So local here exists and it equals nine and then it hits end. And what happens is your computer deletes it. So this no longer exists exists. So even when I come down here the message box underscore P local no longer exists it doesn't know what local is unless I go just above it and type in local equals 7 okay now it knows what local is because I just made it alright now for instance on the other hand an instance here is always available to this class and the reason why this happens is because just like the class itself when you go dot new instance variables are also pushed into your RAM space okay it's kinda like you have maybe I should go and paint on that yep load up a grid think of it somewhere like this this is your in this is your class here so my class don't you right when you create an instance variable inside of that class, think of it as if it's doing this. It's just putting a dot in there saying, here's more memory for you. Okay? And that's what an instance variable does. It puts it into memory, and it won't be deleted until uh, the class itself is deleted. So, since in this case we're not actually disposing it, garbage collection will do it for us. That's how you get rid of an instance variable. So an instance variable created here will be available to this method, to this method, to this method, to this method, all of them. Okay? So every method inside of my class will be able to have access to this. Alright? Thumbs up. Okay. Now I wanted to uh, cover a little bit about how .new actually creates instances of a class rather than just the same one. So I didn't quite explain this before, but even though I said you know, you'd add more memory space to your RAM every time you go dot new, you're actually creating another one. So this would be my class one and then my class two. But they've still got the same name, kind of, if you understand. Alright, so I go back into it, into scripting, and I go my class dot new my class two okay and for this I'm going to add in some arguments I'm going to call this I'll do ten for this one and then I'll do nine for this one and when you go dot new you're actually putting in arguments into the initialize method which has none at the moment so I'm going to put in number number and I'm going to go at instance equals number. And now instead of doing this, 
Well, method one, I can actually. No, I'll just call method two. Ah. Okay. Now, in. Get rid of method one, since that will assign the instance variable, and just call method two for both of these. My class. Dot. Method two. Cool. Play it. Ten. Nine. Because, like I just said, these are arguments for the initialize method when you go dot new arguments here. Okay? Now you may be wondering why was the first one 10, the second one 9? Well, like I just said, when you go dot new, you're creating another you're creating another instance of this class. So it's kind of like uh I'm trying to think of a metaphor here. Hmm. It's kind of like having a tennis ball, a tennis ball, and then you you get one from the packet. Tennis ball equals one from packet. Okay, and then you, maybe you want to have two tennis balls, so you can get tennis ball two equals one from packet. And we'll go dot new just to make this a little more interesting. But since one from packet is actually not a class, this will throw me an error if I try to run it. But I hope you understand the point. Tennis ball equals one from packet dot new, and if I want another tennis ball, then I can get another one from the packet, right? So just think of classes as an endless packet of whatever it is you want to get from it. So I've made two classes and I can make these as many times as I want and it's just going to keep on adding more and more onto the RAM space completely and it's all happy with it, it doesn't mind okay and in all of these classes I can also access all the methods too so for method 3 def End. And now both my class one and my class two, I can go dot method three, and it's all fine. Alrighty. So as long as we understand that you are getting a new instance every time you go my class dot new or any class dot new for that matter, as long as you understand that you're creating a new version of it, so to speak, you're all good for this. Otherwise, instance variables are just anything, uh, just a variable that can be accessed anywhere from something inside that class. So if I was to go add instance down here, it wouldn't be 10 or 9. It would be nothing, really. Okay? So instance over here is not going to affect what's in here. Instance in here at the moment is only relevant to this class to create it. So my class equals my class on new 10. For at the moment, when I make this, my class here, this local variable, is going to have instances 10. And this one here is going to have instances 9. Alright? And I hope you're following that. 